want to start at verse 1 so that you'll get a setting of uh, the story. Amen? Yeah. Amen. First, uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 8. Chapter 8, verses 1. When you have a statement. Amen. Well, the Bible says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that uh, we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that idols is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods, many, and lords, many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things are we in him, and one Jesus Christ, Lord, by whom all things, and we by him. How bid? There is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol until this hour eat it as a thing offered unto idols. And their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commandeth us not to go. For neither if we eat are we better Neither if we eat not are we worse. But take heed least by any means, as this liberty is yours, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge, sit meet at meet in the idol's temple, shall not he his conscience of him which is weak be and brought it to eat those things which are offered unto idols and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died but when he sinned against the brother and wound his weak conscience you sin against Christ wherefore if meat maketh my brother to offend I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, least I make my brother to a fin. Thus is the reading of the sugar. Hold your Bibles in your right hand and repeat after me. This is the living word of God. This is the living word of God. The living word of God dwells in my heart by faith. The living word of God dwells in my heart by faith. I'm about to receive this life-giving truth. I'm about to receive this life-giving truth. It is my daily provision. It is my daily provision. For I'm grown by the word of God. For I'm grown by the word of God. I'm changed by the word of God. I'm changed by the word of God. I'm cleansed by the word of God. I'm cleansed by the word of God. I'm kept by the word of God. I'm kept by the word of God. I share God's life through his word. I share God's life through his word. I defeat the devil through the word. I defeat the devil through his word. I am kept by the word. I am kept by the word. I share God's life through his word. I share God's life through his word. I win souls to declare the word. I win souls to declare My faith is based on the word. My faith is based on the word. I am produced by the word. Our eternal authority is the word of God. Our eternal authority is the word of God. And every needed blessing, and every needed blessing is, revealed in the word. is revealed in the word. So I determine now, as an act of my own will, I will hear the word. I will believe the word. I will receive the word. And I will do the word of God. Because if I do, I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name, repeat after me, I am. But God says I am. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
We've been talking about a lesson this morning. Some tests for right and wrong. Some tests for right and wrong. The Bible declares unto us that there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But in the end thereof, there is destruction. Understand that in the text, Paul gives voice to a principle that is directly related to much that concerns us in the modern day. Even though few of us will be bothered with the concern of eating meat that's offered on a pancake altar, Paul was referring to a local problem of great significance. Understand he had new converts. And when you are a new convert, understand you can be led to anything if you don't know the truth. People that are mature are not so easily led because the Bible declares unto us that we have to test the spirit by the spirit. So anybody can pull anything on you, especially when you are in the word of God. See, when you're in the word of God, it gives you liberty. It gives you a certain freedom to do things that people that don't know the word of God can't do. Some people be walking around with rabbit foot, rabbit tongues, monkey foot, and all kinds of stuff simply because they don't have freedom, liberty in the word of God. Understand the Bible says know the truth. It's the truth that will make you free. Let us pray. Father, we come today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we count it a privilege and an honor to stand and to share the living word of God. Father, think through my mind, speak through my lips, that I might accurately and rightly divide the word of truth. Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. Let the will of the Father be done. God, be glorified in us. We'll forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Some tests for right and wrong. Understand Paul was dealing with some recent converts from paganism. It was their custom to offer meat sacrifices on the altar of their pagan gods. They looked upon the eating of meat as being an expression of worship. Understand, we can get so involved in some things that when we come to the truth of God, we'll try to make room for that thing to fit in the word of God. Understand, the Bible says to the mature Christian that off eating meat that was sacrificed to a God was nothing. Understand, some things we do are nothing. Some things that we do are a labor at are nothing. Some things that we put our hand to are nothing. They don't gratify us, they don't encourage us or they encourage others. Some things are nothing and we'll strive at the wind. And the Bible says that the believer they didn't believe that eating meat was harmful in their personal life anyway. But Paul urged them that love and concern for the weaker brother should be the guiding principle that controlled their behavior. He declared that he would have sustained, abstained from eating meat rather than to be the cause of the weaker brother sin. He gave force to a principle rather than to a strict law. Mm -hmm. Understand, if there's anything that's going to cause your brother to suffer, mm -hmm. Paul declares that he had to sustain a state for me. Yeah. Yeah. You see, a friend of mine called me last night. He told me about a man that had a um, Christian school. Mm -hmm. And he told me about the man had been doing the school about 11 years. And he told me, he said, but 
But uh, I'm not gonna tell you a lie. Sometimes when I, I'm out in my yard cutting my grass, I, I, I like to have me a cold beer because, you know, and that's great. But understand, what if one of the brothers that had a problem with alcohol see this brother drinking beer, he would think it would be all right. That's why when you're a Christian, when you're a child of God, you can't do anything, you can't say anything because you don't know what the next brother is dealing with. Understand why I can't drink before you. It might not bother you, might not bother me, but understand you may have had a struggle with that thing and the same thing I walked out of, you might get hung up with for the rest of your life. Paul says, I will abstain from eating me if it's going to cause the weaker brother to fall. If anything, listen, that's why I have to be on time. That's why I have to be about my father's business. Because, see, I have to be an uh, 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 a, a example to you. Yes, yes. You see, I can't do it in a kind of way. I can't say it in a kind of way. Because I have to be an example to you. Because, understand, some people are still weak. And if I compromise, I'll give them an excuse to do it too. Yeah, that's all right. So Paul says, if that's going to cause my brother to suffer, uh -huh. I won't even eat meat. I guess I, I won't eat it publicly, but I won't even eat it privately. Uh -huh. See, something you don't have to worry about me doing it privately because I won't do it publicly. Amen. Right. <laughs> if it's going to cause the weaker brother right. to stumble, understand the Bible says that the strong are to carry the infirmities of the weak. Yes. That simply means that if I'm stronger than my brother is, then I ought to be strong enough to carry him, to encourage him, to tell him there's a way out. Because the same God that brought me out can bring you out. But how can I tell you he'll bring me out if I, he'll bring you out if I'm still doing the same thing. Paul says, Great. I will abstain from doing it. Mm -hmm. We must seek to discover principles. Yeah. Then, with the help of the Holy Spirit, apply them to the different views of the modern world. Mm -hmm. I won't be before you long. Take time. There are 10 tests we can use to help us to make a decision concerning right and wrong. It would be beneficial to the parents to observe them. And it would be most helpful to the young people if they would memorize them and observe them. The first test has to be the spiritual test. When I'm taking the spiritual test, I need to ask myself, we need to ask ourselves, is this action that we're about to do or is this attitude that we have expressly forbidden in the word of God? Is this the way God wants me to act? Is this the thing God wants me to do? If I'm spiritually in doubt, am I aware of what the Bible teaches concerning this issue? What does the Bible say about it? I know what the world says about it. I know what the other people say about it. But what does God say about it? Am I willing to let the teachings of the Bible be the deciding factor that determines my conduct? Can I just lose it anytime I want to? Can I pick it up and lay it down anytime I want to? Can I say what I want to? Go where I want to? Do what I want to? Or do I have to do it according to the word of God? <laughs> Secondly, there's a prayer test. Is this concerning that which I ask both for the approval of God and the blessings of God? I prayed about it. Now can I ask God for his blessings? Oh. Or can I ask God for the approval of it? Uh, I pray about it. Yes, yes. If I have an unction in my spirit that tells me no, then I already have the answer. Oh, oh. <laughs> Good 
Or can I count God to smile upon it, to bless it? When I pray for your destruction, for your downfall, can I ask God to bless it? Then there's a personal test. We all have to have personal tests. Because understand the personal test, we'll have to ask ourselves, will doing this particular thing make me a better Christian? Will saying anything I want to to my brother cheat him any kind of way? Neglect the forsaking of the assembly of myself. Not being involved in the things of God. I will it aid my spirit's growth? Will it cause me to become more Christ-like? Cussing you out, running you down, talking about everybody over town. Will it cause me to be more Christ-like? Okay. My Lord, my Lord. That's all right. Then there's a social test. Amen. Uh. <coughs> will my doing this particular thing influence others? Lord. To be better Christians. Or will it provide a stumbling block My Lord. before their feet? Uh, the Bible says, he that put his hand to the plow uh, and look, and look back, back uh, is not worthy, not worthy of the kingdom of God. That's the word. Understand, in the old day, I'm not talking about the modern day, uh -huh. in the old day, uh -huh. they used to farm with ox <laughs> and plow. Yes. And you would, by farming, you would have to, what they call, break rows. That's distant them. And you would dish the row in a straight line. But if you would look back, by distant, the power would crook, go crooked, and you would have a crook in the row. The thing about that was that other people would have to come behind you because you didn't always work in the same field. Mm -hmm. So when other people came behind you, if you had a crook in the row, yes, yes. they would have to follow that crook. I'm saying, if you are a Christian and you're not doing the right thing and then somebody's following you, where are you leaving them? Oh, wow. Yeah, Where they find a crook in your row? Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then there's a the practical test. What will the results be if I do this particular thing? If I do this particular thing, will it be a desirable or undesirable thing? Will it produce happiness or unhappiness for me and others? Then there's a stewardship test. To be a steward is that to be accountable for the things that God has entrusted in your hands. Mm -hmm. We, we, we got to take the stewardship test. Will I be found, will I be fulfilling God's purpose for my life? Or will I be wasting that which God has entrusted in my hands? That's why I can't complain about where I am. Because it could have been the other way. Yes. Yes. I can't complain about the hamburger when I'm on steak. Because I couldn't have nothing. Amen. I can't complain about the Chevrolet when I want a rose oil. Because I couldn't have nothing. I can't complain about the sandals on my feet when I couldn't have nothing. Yes. 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 Mm. 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 He that is faithful over a few things. God will make you rule over me. So we have to take the stewardship test. And some people don't understand why I want to give me more. Why I want to give me more. Because you won't do the right thing with that which you give you. All right, Bishop. Then there's the universal test. Universal means all right. You know what I'm saying? The universal test says... What would happen if everyone did this? If everyone was just like me, what would it be? If I'm not following God, if 
I'm not keeping God's commandments, if I'm not doing it according to the word of God, if everybody was doing it, where would it be? Would the community be better? Or would it be worse? Then there's a public test. You know, a public test is when everybody knows. When there's nothing hidden. That's what the public test asks. Is this something that I would be willing for everybody to know? Or will it stand the gaze of the public without causing me to be ashamed of it? Can I say the same things privately? Probably the things that I said privately. Can I do the same things I done privately, publicly? If I'm going to do it privately, it's just a matter of time I'm going to do it publicly. I won't be wrong. Just a couple more. The missionary test. Missionary. Missionaries. All of us. He asks us, if we do this, if we say this, if we go here, will it help or will it hinder the progress of the kingdom of God? around the world by me cussing you out mm. <laughs> by me defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit by me not bridling my tongue by me not guarding my heart for out of it flows the issues of life if I do this thing Will it be beneficial to the kingdom around the world? What if everybody done it? What if everybody lose it when they go through something? What if everybody quit when they didn't like it? What if everybody stopped supporting when they didn't like the, the way the support system worked? Okay, okay. And there's the evangelistic test. We are all evangelists. Yes. We are all evangelists. Yes. Yes. But listen, what the writer wants to know, will this cause others to want to know my Savior? When they see me unfaithful. When they see me inconsistent. When they see me putting other things before God. When they see me with idols. Would they, would they want to know my Savior? Uh-huh. When they see me not giving him my best, mm -hmm. when they see me not doing my best for the kingdom of God, yes, yes. <coughs> would they want to know my Savior? Uh -huh. Or would it cost them to lose confidence in him that I claim to be my Savior? Okay. As Christians, yes, yes. we all face the question, is it right or is it wrong? We will find that the Holy Spirit will guide us in the moment when we need to make a decision. If we will apply the test to the issues that are under consideration. And we just simply need to know one question. What would Jesus do? When you get ready to do it, just simply ask the question. All ten can be answered in one. What would Jesus do? Okay. Today's lesson. Some tests for right and wrong. That's my message. If you receive it, give the Lord a hand. Stand to your feet all over this place. Stand to your feet all over this place. There's 
two tests that's going to come our way. And it's going to test everything in us. There's some tests that's going to come our way. And the God that we say we serve, we're going to have to prove it. It's going to test our patience. It's going to test our love. 